we're in a 2014 Volkswagen Beetle. Something I never expected to review. But I got an email from a buddy named Chris up in Northern Virginia, and I was really looking for something different to review this month as well. And when I got this email, I was like, okay. I think I found the different thing I'm trying to do this month. So what we have here is a Volkswagen Beetle that Volkswagen Group themselves decided to help modify. It's on H&R Springs and it's on GSR Beetle shocks as well. So it gives it a really nice short kind of squat and I never thought I would say it but this new Beetle looks really really good. Out of the box Beetle looked great but in comparison to the old generation anyway, the old generation I thought was well insert words here that are nice other than that this is vastly improved and I do remember when they first came out they were marked up pretty high just because it was the newer more masculine version even though the headlights I think the headlights are the only thing left that still aren't very masculine I think they should be just a hair more aggressive but I understand they're trying to be retro and stay with the times and the old times and all that good stuff basically one thing you really notice about this car is the interior. It's the first thing you will see when you get in this car because it's so different than any other mod modern car today. And the reason I say that is because it feels like it has a personality and not just for function. Because most cars today, you get really nice interiors. Even the Mark 7 GTI has a really nice interior. But it's black and leather and just like kind of everything else. You know, it has that expectation. But when you get in this car, you have the expectation of, say, maybe just a boring flat black dashboard and everything else. But you see that it's color matched to the outside, which tons of people have asked Chris, did you do that yourself? I want to do that too. And he is it's factory. That's all it is. I just love the gauges. I love the radio. I love the stick shift. The shifter is pretty good. It's really light. Now, the clutch is incredibly soft. Like, at first, you're just like, I hope I'm not kind of roasting it when you're pinning the throttle. It's like on and off switch, but not nearly as bad as the Mark 7 GTI. Unlike the Mark 7 GTI, which has a two liter, this is a 1.8 liter turbocharged engine. So you're getting like 28 to 30 miles per gallon while also, also having a ton of fun. As you see him cruising on the highway and it's really quiet. You think this big bubble of a car would have a ton of wind noise, but it really doesn't. The wheels on this are Volkswagen. They're not aftermarket, but they're Volkswagen wheels. More of like the performance wheels. And thank God that they put these wheels on because they're not the stupid Hitler wheels that come on everything else. Another thing is, steering wheel's great. It's really comfortable. It's a little thin right here, which is interesting because it feels a lot kind of a little bit different from other Volkswagens, but buttons are here. And then it has a little R logo, and you're like, oh, like a Golf R or anything like that? Well, the Golf R's brakes are on these cars. And a lot of other journalists were saying, oh, well, the brakes on these new Volkswagen Bugs, they're terrible. So what did Chris and the group do? They put Golf R brakes on this. So this stops on a dime, and at the same time, they squeak really loud. But is that really something to worry about when you just wanna stop and do race car things? No, it's fine. On the other hand, with how smooth it is on the highway, cause believe it or not, when the Volkswagen Bug was designed, it was designed as a car for the Autobahn, I believe. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure because history. But if you think about it, it was made to be a cruiser car to get you from A to B and sometimes in fairly high speeds and you're gonna be okay. But you know, now we look back at that Volkswagen Bug and we're like, holy crap, that was sketchy. That's really like what Volkswagen did with the new Bug. I, I mean, it, it is more rigid, it is a little bit more masculine, but at the same time, poor Chris gets so much crap driving this car. I think it's like that Miata syndrome. Like, not the good Miata syndrome, like momentum-based cars, but it's the hairdresser's car, as people say. It looks pretty unassuming, but at the same time, it has a really nice squat to it. I mean, even RWB makes a wide body kit for these cars, so somebody's noticing. It is a front-wheel drive car, like the GTI, and the steering is really precise. It doesn't feel too artificial or anything like that. It feels pretty analog, surprisingly. But you get on it, and let's see what happens. Alrighty. So I was in third gear there, and it has a very different power band from, say, any other kind of turbo four banger. It's really linear. Like, there's no kind of drastic 
pole or anything like that. And you can't really hear turbo noise as well. You have to really be flooring it to get the turbo noise. It almost feels like an NA motor at first anyway, but I'll see later. So this 1.8 in particular, it's an APR stage one. And with that, it is 215 horsepower and 247 foot pounds of torque. Going to the front wheels. It's in a Beetle. That's pretty sweet. If you think about it, kind of reminds me a little bit of the Abarth, but way more spacious, and I think it's much more comfortable. These seats are fantastic too. I mean, they don't, I don't think around bins they're gonna keep you in place too well, but overall, I mean, they're comfortable for long trips. All right, so going around a bin, just cruising along. It's very unassuming. Not ruining anybody's day. The exhaust is really quiet. But the exhaust on this car is a Borla exhaust, and I had no idea. And I even questioned it at first because of how quiet it was. When the car is idling, you might accidentally turn the key and think that it was off. All right, roll into it. Alrighty. It's a, yeah, it's very smooth. It just. Like, you get a hint of turbo, but that's all you get. Like, it, it feels definitely almost like an NA car, except the turbo is so itty bitty, it reacts more like a naturally aspirated car. Okay, so, uh, brakes. Oh my god, this car stops fast. I barely tapped it, and it was just like, all right, see ya. Okay, the gears are actually pretty long, too, so you can stay in second gear. God, the brakes every time. I accidentally hit him a little too hard. Oh boy. All right. <laughs> Engine has an interesting sound to it, that's for sure, too. Not as much as a blender as the Mark 7 GTI, as I like to call it. Oh, handles bumps really, really well, too. What else I also, as I do this, I notice that I'm not having to raise my voice and I'm just talking to you. And that's pretty cool. This car, with being the bubble that it is, handled extremely well on these springs. I had a blast. But I think a really big part of that is the tire on this car. He's rocking Michelin Pilot Super Sports. My favorite tire on this earth, seriously. Pilot Super Sports, if you have the cash and you wanna do some aggressive driving, are arguably the best tire for street driving. It's incredible. If you don't have a zillion horsepower, they're gonna hook almost every time. And also, we never squealed once. It just went around the bend. And one of those bends is extremely sharp. So I'm very, very surprised. Another thing I'd like to add is the diffuser on the back is pretty sweet. I never seen a diffuser on a Beetle, and it totally threw me off because it looks like it's supposed to be there. And not only that, we also did a very, very brief comparison and found out that it's really close to Grabber Blue. And every car on the planet, it seems like, at a car show or any event you go to is silver, white, black, gray. That's like every time. But. On this car, white looks good, but it has the blue accents, and that's something you don't really see that often. And I really like it. It's so smooth. I'm gonna slow down now. You know, like, I wouldn't say that the car is dramatic. I would say that the car, I'm gonna put this down, the sun's in my face. I wouldn't say that the car is dramatic. It's not the most you know, theatrical kind of thing out there, but if you want something kind of silly and different and precise, it's definitely precise. And at the end of the day, you look around, the interior is just so much fun. You have a great hatch in the back. You can put plenty of stuff back there, surprisingly. We could fit all of my camera gear in the back for the most part. The back seat is actually usable. We tested it. And along with that, it's just interesting. You know, it's a car you don't see a lot that's modified a lot. And I think more people ought to go at it. And I know that Chris wants to possibly add more power to this car, but with what I said earlier, that there's not many options out there to do it, you know, the options are limited, but 
if you, I guess you can kind of see how it's a limited demographic, you know, how many people modify the Beetle. So the number one downside on this car is not torque steer, it's not too much power to the front wheels, it's nothing like that. The ultimate downside to this car is that you cannot turn the traction control off. I love you Volkswagen, but why would you do that? If you want to have a turbocharged Beetle, why would you make it limited to not be able to turn the traction control off? All right, everybody. I hope each and every one of you enjoyed this kind of different review. I know I did. I had a fantastic time driving this car. It's always fun doing the oddballs. I love doing oddball cars that hardly anybody has the guts to go into and try to modify. And Chris had some guts going into the, the bug world. So big thanks to Chris for driving all the way from Northern Virginia to let me drive this car. And I will see you guys next time and take it easy. Have a fantastic day.